not really um, a topic today. I'm kind of bored. It's raining and I can't go for a walk. So I thought, uh, just this is just yapping. So uh, I hope I don't bore you. But uh, just some random thoughts. Now, <coughs> excuse me. I uh, was watching a video, and this is one of the things I did today, is I caught up on the videos that I hadn't seen. There was a video by Miss Jane and she, in England, and she was saying, she was talking about, she was talking to Tina, the Belgian doom waffle in Italy, my other friend, about... It's, that's a, it's, <laughs> My other friend. Uh, yeah, so anyway. Well, they are my friends. They are my friends. We, connections are made like that. And uh, she was saying, Tina was t saying about, like, she was going on about, like, she wants to meet somebody and stuff like that. And that's all, you know, that's, you know, this kind of thing. And Miss Jane said, uh, don't worry, the day will come when you will meet somebody. And even if it only... I mean, that's true, what she said is true, but the real kicker in that was when she said, only if it lasts a day, it's still worth it over it never happening. And I've been always a believer in that. Always. Now, this kind of ties into the greater scheme of things, but I'm a great believer in that, like, you know what goes on in the heavens is echoed inside us and our lives not necessarily on an astro astrological thing although it is but like in just in general okay and uh so she said that and i was like yeah that's exactly right i've always believed in that there's nothing worse than being in a relationship that's not working even if the two people are very nice people and there's nothing wrong with them and they may even get on fine but a relationship that's doomed, you think back to every relationship that you were ever in that, that didn't work out and it was doomed from the get-go. It was doomed from the start. Doomed from the start. But you ignored the signs around it. Even though at the beginning, meeting a new person is lovely, having a great time, uh, learning to know each other and stuff like that, but it was doomed. It was doomed. And I'll tell you how, and people think, oh, well, if the relationship is okay itself, then nothing else matters. No, that's an infantile thing. No, every, in fact, what happens outside the relationship at the time the relationship begins is really what defines if the relationship will fall apart or not. Again, the Dharma thing. If, if the relationship is in Dharma, things will go smoothly around it at the outset. If the relationship is doomed, there will be chaotic things around it at the outset. And uh, so, for instance, you know, you might enter a relationship and you lose your job. Or if you have kids, your kids don't like her or her kids don't like you. Or there's just chaos all around. It's just not a smooth beginning. And it's, uh, there's chaos in and around it, blowing up, blowing up financial problems, things happening like that. And what happens, that's that you're being told that you are not in the right place with the right person. It's as simple as that, okay? And you're being told that. And that's happened to me a few times. And it's it's also happened when a relationship goes along and it's okay and then things fall apart. Then you're not comfortable with it anymore. Now, my attitude is, I'm not telling other people how to live their lives, but my attitude has always been, fuck, I'm out of here, bang. Because I'll tell you how I tell I'll tell you how I how I know this. It will never get better. It will never be fixed. You will never undo the the mess at, that 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 happened in that relationship. And I'm not talking about say a romantic relationship. I'm talking about friendships. I'm talking about like a social group or something like that. It will never be undone. So you run. And it sounds like Al Sharpton there. It will never be undone. So you run. You know, like that kind. Of, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so you run. It will never be undone, so you run. And people say, well, that's a, I've had people say to me, well, that's a very immature attitude to life. Oh yeah, you stuck with this, this person for 10 years and you're ab absolutely miserable telling me I'm immature? You fucking run. 
and you get rid of them. You get these people out of your life. Uh, it's not hateful. It's not vicious. It's not nasty. It's just not going to work anymore or work from this point on. So they go. It's as simple as that. And they meet new people. You meet new people and life goes on. You owe nobody nothing except the children you're raising. You know, oh, but you know, nobody nothing except the children you're raising. And uh, <clears throat> what really brought this home to me is when I grew up in Ireland, divorce was the illegal. Divorce was illegal in Ireland when I was growing up. That didn't mean if, you, if a couple broke up, they went to prison. I didn't mean anything like that. What it meant was there was really no, there was no statutory, there was very bad statutory protections for, you know, women, say, if they were still looking after kids and he ran off. You know, that was the real, that was the bad part of it. But uh, you found in Ireland that there was a thing called the Irish divorce, where if it wasn't working out, he would, uh, he would move off and move in with his new girlfriend and she would have a new fella. And they would make an agreement among themselves that he would continue to pay for the kids, you know, their education and stuff like that. And if she was looking after young kids and she couldn't work, he would take care of that end of things, you know. So that was called the Irish divorce. It wasn't that common, funny enough. It was, it was you know, it did exist, but it wasn't that common. The majority of people just stayed in religion, in relationships for the sake of the kids, or it's a relationship, or and they were miserable. And I saw so much of it. Now, there's the other side of that too as well. When they legalized divorce in Ireland, what happened then was all these protections came in, and basically the courts in Ireland do what they do in every other country. They, they attack men. The men become the bandit. No matter what, he's always the bad guy. And uh, so it went the other way again. <clears throat> and uh, so it, it flipped. And uh, that and and the whole thing was driven anyway, just like the 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 the, the marriage thing here, where they had like legalized gay marriage. It was all driven by law, lawyers and law companies, who knew they were going to make lots of money from gay divorces and marriages. And uh, I mean, I, I mean, I know you know everyone knows that gay generally gays don't have relationships that last a long time. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe they're right that way. I'm not saying I'm putting them down. And I know a couple of gay couples who have been together forever, and that's wonderful. But there seems to be, especially among lesbians, they, you know, is that old joke? Like, what does the, what's the first thing a lesbian brings to a date? Her furniture removal, a furniture van, bringing her furniture in. And what's the second thing she brings? A furniture van taking the stuff out uh, for the second date. And that's, 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 that's true. I've known so many lesbians, they just can't hold relationships down. They're just whatever. They're, they're very, in, they're like little girls all their lives. And of course, there's, there's ones who do have long-time relationships and good luck to them. But, uh, but for some reason, I don't know what it, why or ever, but just, there just seems to be a lot of relationship failures in that community. And the lawyers were just looking at these people as a way to exploit them. And that's why they were like, you know, I'm sure like lots of the ones who ran out and for, you know, we're, we, we can get married now. And they ran out, they ran to the registry office and got married around the country, in cities around the country. I'm sure most of them are divorced now. And the, the, the lawyers knew all that was coming. And then, cha -ching! But anyway, wh where was it? Meandering again. Oh, yeah. So, these people would stay in the marriage. And I would look at these people and I said, they, they should not, he's, he's, he's fucking miserable. She's miserable. If they're staying for the sake of the kids, that's honourable. I'm down with that. Totally down with that. Good luck to them. And uh, they're supposed to anyway. You're supposed to. If you have kids, you have to give up your life basically until they're adults. And you know, and that's good. Fair enough. And they did that. That's honourable. But there was other ones who did it because, you know, and they weren't even married at some of them, and they stay in long-term relationships where nothing worked. It was just horrible, and everything went wrong. And what was it based upon? It was based upon what Miss Jane said. There was, at the beginning, something lovely happened. But it was only supposed to happen for a certain time. And then it was over. And because they, because, and when it's over, that's when the, it, the chaos begins and the mess around it begins. And you have these people saying, oh, I'll fight for my love. What, what you'll fight for your imprisonment? And, uh so what happens is that you're being told right then, the party's over. Go. Walk away. And that's a... Uh, that brings me to this part of the talk. As Biden's press, press secretary says, we're circling back around to this one, okay? 
Um, a lot of people from the pandemic are becoming aware. You know, there's this thing like, okay, they're bored. They might be watching their, their, their Netflix, right? And watching their bullshit, right? And, you know, having pizza for breakfast at 4 a.m. Or going to bed at 4 a.m. And this kind of thing. And after that wears off, they you know, they they create, they create, right? They start, you know, they oh, I'll do something if they're not artistic and kind. I'll paint the bedroom, you know. I'll, you know, I'll build a model railway. I'll, uh, I don't know, I'll do the garden, redo the garden. This kind of thing, right? I'll, uh, I'll get into knitting. Nothing wrong with these things. But that doesn't do, that doesn't scratch the itch either. That doesn't scratch the itch either. So then it reaches the point where uh, this, you have to start doing self-reflection and that's why it's funny enough all these videos of these kind of vlogs are now appearing at the same time uh, and, and not just my you know my friends and stuff like that people i know uh, i'm seeing them all over they're appearing now and they're people ordinary people and when I mean, I say ordinary people, I'm not insulting anybody. You know you're extraordinary, okay? But I'm just talking about, when I say ordinary, I mean people that like I can look at and relate to, you know? That you can look at and say, oh, well, he's like me or she's like me. And these people are going to become very, very powerful now. And uh, very, very influential in society uh, through these vlogs. And why that is, is because they're echoing what's happening in the zeitgeist as a whole. That people are looking into themselves okay and like they're looking there's a lot there's going to be loads of divorces when this is over loads because what's happening people are forcing to be house prisoners in the same house are going to start realizing i don't really like this person i don't really like them you know and uh people who are in lo you know long distance relationships who can't visit each other because of the the flying and stuff like that they're going to go i manage fine without them do i really um, you know do i need them i should get a relationship closer to home and uh, this kind of thing and likewise people who have been apart from their friends are going you know what i don't want to get back with them i'll give you an example of that a very good one is um is when I lived in America, I used to read this paper called The Irish Voice. Uh, actually, it wasn't a bad, it wasn't a bad paper actually, but it was aimed at like Irish immigrants or peop Irish people who lived in America who were kind of under 40. And uh, so it had like really good music pages and stuff in it. So like there was lots of good things about bands like, you know, uh, there was bands from Ireland that were playing in America that could go and see them and lots of kind of cool, there was a lot of good stuff in it like that. And it was also, you know, and, and they shied away from the IRA, like the older generation stuff. And they, they concentrated more on Irish cultural things as well as news. But in America, it was, it was some good editorials and stuff, I have to say. And there used to be a kind of a, you know, a dear Sinead or something like that, a kind of a helper, a helping page. And a very common, you know, people are like, had moved to America and they'd, they'd found, they had a new life there. And then they went back to Ireland and were shocked at how different it was than what they expected. And what happened was, it was very interesting. Now, for, for, it was a bit, a bit, they're a bit thick, these people, but at some level it's very telling. It was always the same story. Oh, I've been living in America for 10 years and uh, I wanted to go home and see my friends. So I went back to my, my town or city or village or suburb in Ireland and my friends were all married with kids and they weren't into going out every night or anything like that. In their mind, they still believed it was Ireland. Has been, when they went from Ireland to America, when they emigrated, they thought that Ireland was like on a pause button. And when they could go back to Ireland, the pause button was pressed. A kind of an NPC thing when you think about it. But it was a very common thing. And then you'd see, I used to talk to people who live over there. And they'd say, they, they say to me, Do you ever, would you ever, me, I say to me, would you ever go back to Ireland? And I said, oh, no, I definitely will. I love Ireland. I love America. But, I, you know, this, Ireland has a, a special, it's a something about Ireland. I just, I just, you know, no matter how well I did in America, I... There's something special about Ireland. My, my heart really does belong on this land. And that's very true. And uh, and they and I said, what about yourself? She said, I'd love to, but 
I don't know anybody there anymore. And this is, I mean, like they've moved away and stuff. No, they're all strangers to me. I wouldn't be able to go back to my town or where I grew up, the neighborhood I grew up in. Everyone's different. They're all changed. They've all bought houses and have kids and stuff like that. And I found that very interesting. I felt what happened was they had, they had discovered that this going to America, see, that's why I always tell people emigration is a wonderful thing. I always say to young people, you know, you don't have to leave forever. But go away for a while, you know, and, and, and survive by yourself on your own you know, initiative of moxie. And you will learn everything. You'll learn things about yourself. You know, once you're, you know, uh, once you're not, you don't end up in, in like an ethnic ghetto. But if you do it on your own, you will, you will learn things about yourself that will be valuable for the rest of your life. And, um, and so, you know, I used to think that like, now I'm thinking, when you think about it, lots of people who've gone into lockdown, so they can't see people they know and stuff like that. They've kind of emigrated, but into them into their home, you know. And when this all opens up again, they're not going to be the same. I mean, they're not. They're not going to be the same anymore. And if you haven't been changed by the lockdown, then you probably haven't been. A, you probably haven't grown as a person, because being changed by the lockdown is actually making you grow as a person. Your values are different, will be different. And, you know, you have people who say, oh, when this lockdown is over, the first thing, down the pub with me mates. But for every one of them, say he has ten mates, eight of them will be gone. I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing it. I don't, I don't, I don't do it anymore. Just, you know, yeah, I don't do it anymore. And that's because they, they realised that they had a dysfunctional relationship with their friends. You know, I mean... And that's 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 an important thing too, and th it took the lockdown where I'm the kind of fucker who goes, "This isn't working anymore. I'm out." I mean, that's just me, okay. And uh, that probably comes from the, you know, from being a, like that since I was a kid. I'm like, uh, I'm very independent, do my own thing. Definitely a maverick, you know. Definitely a vagabond. That's definitely absolutely one hundred percent. And uh, but that's not a, that's just, you know. But it's not a case of I'm out of here. I don't care. It's like I'm out of here. It's not going to get better. You understand? You know, there's no honor in suffering in a situation, a relationship, or something like that, for the sake of maintaining the relationship. There's no honor in that. It's bullshit. What's better is for you to go off and save that energy that might be caused, that's been depleted out of you by that situation, that marriage or whatever, and go off and create a new one. And you will find that you will, your, your life will, you know, why, you know, you know, why suffer when you can thrive somewhere else? I'm a great believer in that. And uh, you want to see the most miserable and unhappy people in the world, in the world? people who are in a relationship that's not working and they can't they, they, they're just not working and, and you see it in their eyes and in their faces and in what they do and how they think and, and their actions but yet they think they have to do it because the other person might be a nice person or whatever or they really like them or they had a nice time with them but it's not forever and that's what she, the, the lady Mrs. Miss Jane in England was saying she would, you know, if you can cherish the magic of the short, wonderful moments of your life and, and, and learn, and, and instead of seeing them as something that's gone, but rather as a, something that's gilded your soul, it made your soul sparkle, it's, a, you, 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 your whole relationship, your whole, your whole, your whole uh, approach to relationships changes. It changes, and you suddenly, you, you suddenly realize that oh, it was it was good for a day or it was good for a week, but that's all it was meant for. And then you don't hold on to all the other stress of it going wrong from that from that point on, for the sake of hoping it will go back to when when it was good. It never fucking goes back. Never fucking goes back. Okay, and this all you any normies that are watching this video that you think you're going to go back. To how things were when this all ends, you're in for a rude awakening. You're going to walk all all your ones, all your NPC normie types. Just think I'm going to go down the pub. You may to be there. You're going to walk into that pub to the sound of your own fucking footsteps. 
and that goes for everything for so many people they're going to get such a shock at how different their own lives will be rather than the world as a whole but their own personal lives you know you think about like oh will we ever fly on holiday again they're all mi- they're all minor things they're all little things like will i go on holiday again the real thing is like will i fucking know myself again hon will i fucking know myself again and all these normies are all locked in the house going yeah back, back to the football back to this back to that they're going to find themselves wanting and wishing that the coronavirus actually killed them because they're going to come out of out of this lockdown not knowing where the fuck they are and not, they they literally think because they've been so caught up in watching this thing on the TV and the media that when the media says go you know it's like lockdown turn on the ch- tv channel i'm now in channel lockdown you know turn it off back to normal i'm back to normal they literally think they're literally thinking like that they're literally thinking like that they're going to get to have the shite frightened out of them when they re-enter into the world and then they will then and then in true normie style they'll say you know those people that were against the lockdown and we made fun of them you know, whenever they'd show up on the on the journal.ie uh, comments page, I used to post, How are you, Gemma? How are you, John? How's your tinfoil hat? Those people. How are you, David Icke? How are you? Ha 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 ha. Conspiracy theorists. Ha ha. You know what? They were right. But in the true normie style, the normie learns things that afterwards that are a fuck all use to them because it's already passed. Uh, because... <clears throat> The, you know, the, they sit, you know, that you know, that it's like, uh, it's like the Sting song. If you love somebody, set them free. I really do believe that's one of the most profound statements ever. If you love somebody, set them free. Because the worst thing you can do is to actually stay in the thing when it's never going to work out. And it's never going to be anything but painful, or mostly painful. Or it's a, or you're putting on a facade to pretend it's all great. That's the worst fucking thing in the world. And you're going to get lots of normies charging out their house when the lockdown are over. I'm free as a bird. I'm free as a bird. Where's everything gone? And then, you know, uh, uh, but, but, those, but those of us who part of this uh, discourse on the parallel have a lot will have already begun to build our parallel society and in that parallel society you see this is the beauty of it right because we took time in this lockdown to make videos like this to even not to make videos but think about it talk about it with your family and stuff like that we have built a parallel society or a, in a constructing one that is completely irrelevant to the one that's going to emerge when the lockdown's over so it's you know so it's like uh it's like that classic thing like when you were in love with somebody right and you broke up and your heart was completely broken right and like, how will i ever live without this person blah 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 like all the songs say and then you meet somebody new and you're very happy and you don't and you know the most amazing thing is that you, when you meet somebody and you're instantly happy, all the everyone else ceases to exist. It's an amazing thing. So it's like that's how I always tell you. If if you're in a relationship with someone that is still going on about their ex or someone like that, you're, you, they're not in a relationship with you. They're still in a relationship with the old one, and uh, that's what our feelings really like. And these people, you walk down the road and and you, you bump into them one day or train station or something. You see them. Oh Jesus, how are you? You know, Siobhan. Oh, how are you, Thomas? And you look at this person and you feel absolutely nothing. And you cannot believe that you had all these emotions and and, and all this stuff deep inside you for this person. And then you broke up with them and you met someone else. And then instantly as you met someone else who was nice, they ceased to exist. There was no memory of them other than, oh, well, somebody's nice to know. Uh, you, you just, boom, you just moved on. And 
you know, hopefully the person you meet has the right charisma to make it. But if you meet a person that's like that and it's like, you know, that's just right, boom. But even if you're only with them for a weekend, it's not, forget, you still forget that person. That's what Miss Jane is saying. Just the one fucking person does it. You know, can, it's amazing. It's like a magic thing. And even if that doesn't last, it doesn't matter. It cleared up the pain of the old one. But you meet the person and you feel nothing. And you cannot believe, God, all the emotional capital I had invested in this person at one time. And now, pardon me, and now I meet them and it's like, they're, I, who, you know, I don't, if, you know, I don't care. I don't care about them or anything. And, I'm, I, you know, I, and uh, that's because you've gone into a kind of an emotional parallel world. Now, that's, now, when we come out of this thing, this lockdown, those of us in the tribe who've done this kind of stuff, who've worked on ourselves, who've thought about stuff, and have talked about it, we are going to glide into the new world that's coming, but on a surfboard, as we, as we sl- say a lot over it, in our own parallel reality, where the normies are going to come out and they're going to hit a fucking tidal wave of despondency because it's not going to be what they thought it was going to be the continuation of what was before and this is this is this is what this is the this is the i know we've had our bad days i had a very bad day last week over this lockdown stuff i mean i i hide my worst moments from you guys i had a ter a few days ago i had a terrible day i was really really upset and uh i felt like my you know my life has been taken away from me and uh but I keep a lot of that stuff to myself. And, uh, but I don't have them often, but there was a, the other day, for some reason, it got really bad. And, uh, and so, you know, uh, but it was through these, this, this discourse we're all having, that I'm, then I was okay again, you know, that, and then I'll find, I'll have this, this is the, the, this is the basic training for the war that we're going to fight when we come back. And we will fight that war so much easier. Because we're not look, we're not depending on what's been, we're not depending on what's been given back to us. You know, we're not depending on that, because we have our own groove that we're slotting into, our parallel world that we're building. So we, we glide into that one. We don't glide into their one, but so the shock won't be as horrific. Because what happened was when we were locked down, we realized a lot of us, the old world was shite, wasn't it? Now, I didn't think my old world was shite, but a lot of people realise that they were, and they will be fine as well because they've entered into their own parallel society. Like the one, the fellow was saying, you know, his wife will say to him, so, you know, you and, you and the lad down the pubs on Sunday now watching the football, it'll be great when it, they can do that. And he's going to say to him, you know what? I'm not going to do that ever again. I'm not interested. It's not for me. I don't want to do that. I'm going to do something like take up fishing or something like that. I don't want to be doing that anymore. That's going to happen a lot. And the ones, the normies who don't, don't, that's our, that's our constituency. That's our parallel society. They're not, they may not be watching these videos or be part of this, but they're inside, they're doing that. And you're going to find out a whole different demographic will change. There'll always be the programmed meat. You'll always have to deal with that. Always have to deal with that. Now, taking it to the political thing, right? Right now in the United States, there are, Possibly thousands of people in Texas. I love Texas. Wonderful people in Texas who are probably freezing to death right now because of green energy. The gaslight of these tur- wind turbines that middle class people worship like dildos. You know, like middle class dildos. In Ireland, in the Phoenix Park in Dublin, there's a big white cross that was put there when the Pope visited in 1980. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm not bothered by it. I mean, I think it's quite a nice sculpture, the way it's set up. It's just a, a, a simple white cross, and it doesn't bother. It's a gigantic park, so it doesn't, like, dominate or anything like that. But uh, I'm not bothered by it. But I, I, I know, I, I just see, I've been there, you know, in the park. It's full of wild deer. It's imagine a city park full of wild deer, but that's what the Phoenix Park in Dublin has. That's how big it is. And uh, I go see the deer, and there's a, there's a megalith in there as well. It's called the Druid's Temple. And it's it's got a lot of other history as well in it. And it's just a nice place with old trees and the deer running around. But I'd go there sometimes and I'd see the big crucifix. And I, I, I you know, I wouldn't say I was moved, but I would see, i see like old Irish ladies and stuff like that doing a, doing a decade of the rosary under the crucifix. And 
Yeah, I, I would definitely genuinely be moved by it. The, the see, their fate would move me. You know, just like you know, you know, you'd see. It was just so, just something nice about it. And uh, even though I, you know, I wouldn't do that. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm for religious tolerance. I'm not saying that we should all become pagans. Just like I don't believe in anything like that. But uh, these wind turbines in the, around the country now look exactly like the papal cross, and you have middle class people like you know Ferda and. Uh, Samantha from Renla, and they worship this thing like their crucifix. Oh, it's carbon neutral energy, darling. This kind of thing, and uh, well, because of that mentality, this this unconditional middle class devotion to climate change religion, that people in Texas are freezing right now, uh, because the wind turbines not only are frozen solid, but they're having to divert power from the main grid to stop to, to, to heat up the wind turbines because they're frozen so not only are they not like creating electricity but they need electricity well they need they need like 15 tons of lubricant a year and a diesel engine the size of a locomotive to start them just, and they uh they so they, this is the whole fu it's now in a, in a state loaded with gas and oil that's you know the gulf of mexico is full of oil and full of gas there's gas everywhere in texas and yet because of this green energy thing, people are freezing. Because of Al Gore and his lies, and all you know, all these horrible academics. This is another thing we have to. When this thing is over, we have to treat academic academia like a pariah. They have no further place. To, they're just propagandists working for the government and the uh, and the corporations. We have no. They have no, We have to. In our parallel society, academia is now disposed of. It doesn't have a place or a voice, and uh, it's it, they're, it's a false priesthood. And uh, it's proven that numerous over and over again. And uh, so they're frozen, these things, you know. So the Greta Thunberg, you know, dildos and uh, the Al Gore dildos, they're, they're frozen solid. And then and likewise, the, 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 the solar panels, the, the sun can't get to them because there's snow all over them and frost. And the frost is cracking the panel because they're not made to be in the frosty environment <laughs> and uh, so they're smashing the panels are all being smashed and broken by the by the by the cold the ice and the cold and that's a lot people in texas will walk away from that saying never again will we ever make the mistake of listening to these green energy nuts and that will cascade to other other places and texas will be held up as a as a, a sign of the the mental illness of academia and political policy now talking about in the relationship context this is all happening at the beginning of biden's presidency and i, I you know i mean this is these are auguries this is the, in, the, in ancient rome in ancient rome in pagan times if an emperor was installed and there was a great famine or something went wrong the first thing the romans would say is the emperor is cursed the emperor had the gods are the gods are angry at the emperor and so as soon as biden is president what happens the text is freezing and it's not like an invisible microbe you can't see like COVID 19. this is something you can see tangibly with your own eyes and so there's already portents auguries that biden's dark winter is a dark fact uh, having said that, this is more. Trump is more in the papers now than he ever was. He has a, uh, he's he's running the the Republican Party from the outside, getting rid of all these 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 snakes and traitors and cowards and psychopaths. He's fucking twenty face fucking weasels, you know, the turtle men types. He get he's routing them all out of the uh, the Republican Party who turned on him because they thought that they could you know if you get him I'll, I'll be I'll be I'll be I'll be on the winning team those, those kinds of maggots and uh, and politics is filled with them and uh, so he's like he's, he's thrown off he's, he's literally running there from the outside even if he's and I bet he's not I bet he's not actually calling up the the GOP it, you know the the internal you know Republican Party you know, administrators and saying, do this, do that. His sheer fucking charisma and his massive support base is demolishing itself, is, is having such a psychic effect upon them that they're demolishing themselves from the inside. And the ones who realize what was, was the horror and the terrible things that were done to Trump unfairly are now working for him without him sending any orders. Now, 
mainstream media is trying to make out that Trump still thinks he's president. Oh, he is. He fucking is. He, he, I, I, did you not see the, the 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 reception he got when he came back from a golf match the other day of President's Day? He is. He's still the president. He's the president of the United States of America. Even the Democratic liberals don't feel that Biden is president. They don't feel. They don't feel it. And that's the same thing. They're in a dysfunctional relationship. And what they're going to do is they're going to f- the, the mainstream media and all the all the normie liberals are all going to stand by Biden until it destroys them. Because they have immediately they're being told off the bat that the Biden presidential thing has a dysfunctional relationship with America. It's not going to work. And all the, I mean, the journal.ie today had a pure Clinton Foundation propaganda piece. It was like, isn't it great that Ireland has a US president we can fall in love with again? It was, it was, it was shameless. But the funny thing was, even on, a, even on a normie meat goal and paper like that, the majority of the comments were, this is pure fucking propaganda. I don't like Joe Biden. Ireland doesn't like Joe Biden. And, uh, you know, he stole the presidency. So it's like the normies have come around even to that, which has amazed me. You know, and these were like normie normies. They weren't like, you know, MAGA types. It's because what Trump said the other day, what the, the MAGA movement began is only beginning. It's, it's, he was literally only the seed, the fruit tree that bore this fruit. Now, I'm seeing people say, like, I, I had to deal with Muppets the other day on Facebook before I got banned. You on the right, you on the right. I'm not on the fucking right or the left. I'm... I, I, I see politics as a chess game. And if the left is, is doing great, I'd leave them alone. And they were if the right were doing great, I'd leave... And vice versa. We just, right now, the left, they're insane. There's two million people freezing the debt in, in Texas as proof that the left, they're insane. The right wing, on the other hand, would be... A move, if you move, move things to the right, we would have a better equilibrium of... A parity of esteem, to use a, a Sinn Féin thing. And so that's what that's all that is, right? But the old, the old, the liberals and the lefties are now the the modern aristocrats, and they're an elitist, snobby, uh, just arrogant, and their gods are, you know, the average the, the average socialist today worships billionaire CEO CEOs and politicians beyond anything. And this is why they don't care that the numerous people have now been killed or injured by the Pfizer and other vaccines. They don't care. It's they 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 don't care that some man is cradling his young wife and has two kids and the love of his life is dying in the bed of a stroke from taking the Pfizer shot and he's he's you know and he has to raise two kids on his own with no mother. Oh, they don't care about that. Once they're that once the lefty's favorite CEO or politician is happy, they're happy. This is what leftism is about. This absolute belief that politicians are gods and CEOs like Bill Gates are infallible gods. And this is what they're like. And so because of that, you know, they, 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 have, this, they, they have this thing, oh, MAGA is, 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 un, is, is, is popularism. It's white nationalism. It's, it's, it's dangerous patriotism. No, it's not. It's people saying, I'm me, I'm not you. I'm not Greta Thunberg. I'm not Al Gore. I'm. I don't relate to you people. What well, you know, and the, and the left completely betrayed the working class. <coughs> <coughs> and the left. The left. Lost the working class, and the working class went over to MAGA, and in England they went to Brexit. And there's nothing wrong with populism. I love this whole thing, populism. Like, the masses shouldn't be allowed to think for themselves. That's what, 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 when people who complain about populism, what they're really saying is, uh, the experts should run people. They shouldn't be allowed to think for themselves. And that's, that's what they're saying. We don't value your, your freedom of speech, your freedom of expression. We don't value your opinions. We don't value you. Uh, get with the program. That's what they're saying. And you can't. You talk to people like that; they won't put up with it. And that's what MAGA is. MAGA is the is the. Is, it's ironic. You see, it's always thing like you know people say, "Oh, how can you how can you say that about the work? Why do the working class support Trump if he's a billionaire? Because he's not an elitist. 
when Trump had his money, he did like Trump is basically, uh, you know, a, a white trash and, and like a stanger like me. Like instead of him, I mean, I don't mean in a bad way, but he, but when people get lots of money and they use it to control others, be very wary. So, like, the first thing, I've got a billion dollars, I'm going to sterilize Africans. I've got a billion dollars, I'm going to, you know, put dust in the air to stop fucking plant. You know, I have much more respect for someone who goes, I have a billion dollars, I'm going to get myself a hot Eastern European wife, a couple of private jets, and uh, and that's that. I've, you know, once they made the money themselves, and they worked hard and got that money themselves, well, I have much more respect for the honesty of that than the dishonesty of like I'm now going to become an an unelected ruler of the world because I'm a billionaire through my altruism this is dictatorship by money and this should be the antithesis of what socialists believe in that someone with so much money could buy influence over the world but yet all these socialists today they fucking love Bill Gates and people like that they fucking love him and uh because they they want they ultimately they, they they ultimately want the dictatorship. See what makes a person a socialist in the old days was equality, and but it was also a lot of jealousy and want. When I look, you see, you know, like the relationship thing. Like when I was younger, I would have been like socialist inclined, but it was because I didn't have any fucking money and I was jealous of the people who did, to a degree, you know. And then when I got the money, I was like, oh, this is very fucking nice. Fuck the system and this kind of thing, you know, and. Uh, and you you know and these ones who've never made anything of their lives tend to be socialist all their lives they've done nothing they've made nothing of their lives because they always want to take someone else's money and uh, that's why like you know it, it, I think it was you know this is why things like the anti-lockdown movement in Ireland tended to be from people from the right wing right wing of things because there are people who don't want to go they know that the government is okay until a point and then it starts getting dangerous i guess like a relationship or like a person they're okay to you know you know we all have a friend who we like we love them and we see we see them once a week or once a month or once a year we don't want to fucking see them every day you know it's like that kind of thing uh, you know I, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the person it's just that like it's just like you, you don't eat a mars bar every day you don't eat you know a snickers bar every day or anything like they don't have a bowl of ice cream every day. It's the same as that. It's like moderation is what makes it beautiful, and uh, and funny enough, that's the best relationships as well as too. But uh, it's a uh, it's 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 all about the dysfunctional relationship with everything, and you're always on the lookout for this. Now, I know that uh, the the Biden administration is doomed. Uh, just because of what happened in Texas. And people say, oh, well, look at Trump, there was all riots. No, they were engineered. They were paid for and engineered by the Clintons and people like that. Uh, what's happening and, and, and endorsed by the same people who were voted for right? No, this is nature. When nature talks, you listen. And uh, when nature when nature calls your name, you, you, you go there. And what's happened to these people? When this lockdown ends, just watch, just watch. You'll find that you're in a much better position than your neighbour next door who thinks they're going to go back to things just how they were. Why? Because you weren't locked down. What happened was you... you you became a seed. You became a flower inside a seed waiting to grow again. You became a butterfly inside a chrysalis transforming. And when this is all over, you'll spread flowers and flutter your wings while the rest of them will find that they just it's just like the person who comes out of prison and kills themselves they 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 they, 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 they the world is not the same thing it's not the same they're going to find that they're going don't define that so like the other day you're allowed your bad days you know give yourself permission to have your bad days process them let them pass but always have your eyes on not it being that way all the time. So again, with the relationships, you can have, you can have a bad day in a relationship. Oh, we made up, we made up. It's okay now. But 
you know it's gonna ha- you're gonna have another one soon. So like then just end the relationship. It's as simple as that. But it's like that's the whole thing. If you're in a relationship with something, and it's and it's all chaotic all around you, the relationship is not meant to be. If it's all calm and easy around you, and there's no and you've forgotten the past. See, I've already forgotten the past. I'm like this is the thing. I've forgotten the pre-lockdown world. It's gone. Just it's it's just like the girl you'd meet t- a year after you broke her heart. Years a year later, you're not going to go. Why the this? Part, I feel nothing. I feel nothing for the old world now. I'm uh, because of this this spiritual experience that I and you and people like us are having during the lockdown, which also includes the bad days. Remember, we're going to look back on this time and say, you know what? In some ways. It was the best time of my life. Because, like it says at the Oracle of Delphi, at the Temple of Apollo, I got to know thyself.